What's up everyone? Welcome back to Practical Software. In the previous video, we've seen how MCP works in practice. I've explained the evolved libraries, the frameworks, the setup that you have to do to use MCPs. And I, we even did an experiment where I blinked this LED on and off. And we did that using big, large scale LLMs that are deployed by the big AI players like Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI. We've also seen that if you want to use LLMs from, from those guys, the big players, you're gonna have to set up your own API tokens and then maybe you have to pay some subscription, maybe you have to pay per token usage. What if I told you that you don't have to use their LLMs, that you can actually host an LLM yourself and that LLM can actually interact as agents. So the same power that we saw in the previous video, the power of modifying databases, of turning on and off hardware and equipment, reading sensors, actuating motors, actuating LEDs, accessing web pages, accessing documents. What if I told you there is a way with a self-hosted LLM to actually perform those same agentic actions. I hereby present you Olama. Olama is an open source tool that allows you to build your own LLM models based on model files or based on previously published, openly published LLM models. In Olama, you're gonna find many cool models that you can play with. Many of them have capabilities of thinking, interacting with tools, computer vision, so they can actually perform some basic image processing actions. Some of them have a big number of parameters. Some of them have a lesser number of parameters. So it's a very nice environment. It's a very nice ecosystem where you can actually pick different LLM models, play with them, play with different versions of them, play with different sizes of them. And maybe one of these models is actually sufficient for your application. Even a famous DeepSeek, which caused a bit of a disruption in the Gen AI ecosystem a few months ago because the best revision of it would actually challenge large LLM that was proprietary from Google and OpenAI. So they, they published their version here and we can actually run their version if we had the hardware capabilities and whatever we run, it would be comparable to Google Gemini Pro even. And here it is, openly public. I can literally just pull this I can run it myself and it will be something close, at least comparable to ChatGPT or even Google Gemini. So in today's video, we're gonna see how to run our own self-hosted local LLM, our own MCP agent, our own MCP clients, everything contained, everything together without any interactions from those enterprise LLMs. Let's get practical. The first thing that I want to show you is how to install Olama. It's extremely simple. And the example that I'm going to show you today is for Linux, because I want to run Olama from within a Docker container. Of course, there's no reason not to do that, maybe. So that, that it's a very simple solution. All you have to do is literally this. If you have a very fresh dev container, you don't even have curl, so maybe you have to install curls, sudo apt get uh, curl, pack and curl, it doesn't matter. So it's very easy to install curl and then you have to call this. After this script is run, you're gonna have Olama already available and ready to be used. So how does it work? At the right side here, this is a different machine that has an NVIDIA GPU because it's very difficult to run models on CPU only. So you probably need a capable, a GPU capable machine to run those models. And I happen to have one, which is a different machine. So that other machine is actually running a Docker container with SSH. So this is actually uh, a SSH session connected to inside of those Docker container. And that same Docker container also has Olama. So it has two ports open, SSH and Olama ports. Olama port is the port 11434. And yeah, I have installed, Olama is already installed. So we have to make sure when, we're, when if you're running Olama from inside the dev container, let's make sure the port is open and available from the host. Running Olama is extremely easy. All you have to do is do this command. So this makes sure that we're not hosting only to local hosts, we're actually hosting to all interfaces. So this, is, this makes Olama actually accessible via external connections. Keep alive is, is not necessarily, is not really necessary. This is make, make sure the models that are loaded in the memory of my machine keeps at least 20 minutes alive. So all I have to do is this, and LLM is already expecting connections. It is expecting API REST requests that will prompt 
my LLMs. It's as simple as that. Perfect. The second step, very simple as well, is basically choose your model. What model do you want to run? And you can choose this based on various different reasons. Maybe you want to pick ChatGPT because it has, yeah, it, it has its own reason to be published. So they, they claim, hey, this LLM is really good at math. This LLM is really good. It's a mix of experts. So it's, it's a generic knowledge. So it's really cool because you have a lot of freedom on that. I'm choosing for this example, the Quen tree, mainly because it supports both thinking and tools. I think it's not strictly needed, but it's cool to see that what the tool uh, does internally before it gives you the final answer. That's actually a feature that you can explore from Olama models. And the main one is tools because I, I still want to run my MCP agents together with this. Second reason is because the this default. So if, if you see late, it, it means that if you pull without annotating the tag, that's the model version that you're going to pull. So that one is 5.3 gigabytes. This size is roughly what it requires from your GPU. So that's your GPU memory. So you need, would need at least 5.2 gigabytes of memory to run this model properly. My GPU happens to have eight gigabytes so it is sufficient once you've chosen your model all you have to do is to very similarly to docker pull it so i've opened a second ssh connection to this same server that is running this so there's a second connection and from that second connection all i have to do is call olama pull gwen3 and then we wait and we are done i can see if the model is here and yes it's ready to be loaded First test I want to do is to actually prompt it. Can I prompt that when three model? Yes, you can. All you have to do is like this as a test, a llama run when three. So you see here on the right side, the whole uh, GPU thing is being loaded. The model is probably in my GPU memory at this point, and now it's ready to be, to be prompted. Hey, what's up? So yeah, it's not too bad. It's it's quite okay. The the speed, the performance is quite acceptable. Does it know math? What's the just uh, yeah? Maybe it's overthinking. It's definitely overthinking. Uh, yes. Okay. Got got the answer. Perfect. So there you have it. I'm running a model within my own machine in my house, and it's a machine fully capable of running a very simple model. And it's really cool that this Quen3 also supports MCP. So let's let's have a look at how that works. Perfect. Let me put this aside, and we're gonna run the same MCP server that we saw in the previous video. So this is the MCP server. Remember from the previous video, the MCP server is communicating with my Raspberry Pi via a gRPC. And there is two functions, turn the LED on and off and check if it's on and off. So that's running right now. This is the MySP server. Then I'm gonna run my Olama clients before I actually press enter. Let's have a quick look at the contents of this application. So here, remember we can pass LLM and we can choose, we can select which model we want to run our agent on. And here there is Google, there's Olama, and there is even ChatGPT. The reason it's very simple to switch is because I'm using something called Langchain. And Langchain is this very nice framework that um, they, they created this abstracted model and there are different implementations of this abstracted model. It's an object-oriented way and that allows us to pass those LLM objects further down the chain of our application. One of the reasons they call it Langchain is because you chain your stuff in an object-oriented way. So here Olama is an object. We instantiate that object. If we choose Olama, we establish a connection. That IP address is the IP address of my machine that has the GPU that is actually running this. So my SSH was done to this machine on the right side. This is the port. So all we have to do is to pass Olama as an argument to that Python script. We also pass the mod that we want to use, in that case, Quen3, and we're good to go. So LM Olama, Olama model, when three and that's it at this point i should be able to connect my led auto let me port the, the screen back i'm gonna make this small and i'm gonna ask it can you please turn my led 17 on question mark observe at the bottom that the agent actually did requests to my mcp agent and here at the right side i'm gonna move my head a little bit we saw that API requests were done to my laptop and these API requests were actually prompts. But we see here the prompts being sent over to the Olama server. Now turn it back off, please. So it's the LLM is receiving requests, API chat requests, we see here. 
also interaction with our MCP server via the MCP client. And just like this, we were able to control the LED. How cool is that? So I've just restarted the conversation just to show you that uh, there is a very nice valid request that you can do to the agents, which are, which is what are your, your tools. And that's an actually a MCP thing that will be running with the agent and it will list the capabilities of the of the agent. So I'm expecting here that it exactly that it provides me the list of what I can do. And just for the sake of just doing it, uh, let me use the second function is LED 17 on. So I find it really cool that with very little, let's say resources and very little effort, I can actually make an LM agent interacting with with hardware running everything local without having to rely on those enterprise llms and i think that's really cool of course uh, there was a correct answer and of course it it takes more time so if i would were to use google gemini chatgpt it would be probably faster so there's a bit of a hardware dependency here uh, but depending on the case, depending on what you have, maybe you have a different whole different machine that is more capable than this one, it will be way faster. Right? So that's really cool that we have this, the power to do this with uh, not too much resource. If I ask it to do, let's say, turn LED in, off, we may see more than one requests being done to the LLS. So it could be the case that the MCP client, depending on how it was implemented and also depending on the quality of the model, it actually performs several prompts with different tokens. So here we just saw one, then another one. So what's happening here, which, which I think is really cool to see is that uh, the way the LLM is being used and maybe it's, it's as if it's talking to itself, it's, it's thinking, what should I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? Did I do it correctly? Maybe it's overthinking, it could be the case here. Maybe it's, it's checking, maybe it's calling the service, is the LED off really before giving me the final answer. So depending on the LLM quality, you're actually going to see this happening more frequently or less frequently. All right, for the final part of the video, I want to show that, that very nice feature about Olama that allows us to, based on a base model, change it a little bit, make it more curative, make it more serious. So we have the power to do that with Olama. The way it works is we use something called a model file. It sounds and looks a lot like Docker file, and it allows us to create, derive new models based on other models. So the way it works is we write something like this from a base model. We change a little bit on the parameters. Maybe we want a system, a default system message. And like this, we can create new models. So as an example, I have prepared this very simple, very, very simple model file that is based on a Quentry model that we have been using. And all I'm doing is to make it more, the temperature higher. So the model that comes out of this is supposedly more creative. And to create the model, all we have to do is while we are in the same directory of the model file, we can also pass a different file name if needed. Olama creates, let's call it Quentry hot. And just like that, I created my new LLM model that has a quaint tree as a base and supposedly hot. And to use it in our application, all we have to do is just to call the client Olama as usual, and then Olama model when we hot. And there we have it, so there. So that model is, we see here also a phenomena of the GPU reloading the memory, probably because it's a different model and that model has a higher temperature. It may be difficult to see. Turn LED servity on. It may be, di be difficult to see because I also have a system prompt that uh, it constrains a little bit all the on the, the kind of replies. and But in general, the, the main thing I want to highlight is that we have the power with model files, we have the power to create our own models, we have to, the power to change them if needed. There are many different parameters here to change the model. We can change the context window, we can change something to prevent repetition, stop tokens. So that's a really, really cool feature. And uh, that's it for this video. 
I wanted just to show you the same thing that we saw in the previous video, but just using the Olamo. I think Olamo is a really cool full features. It offers a lot of freedom for us as let's say, uh, developers that want to try something quick or something different, something ourselves, and we don't have the resources to train our lamps, but at least we, we can have the resources to run our lamps in our own premises. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you have learned something new and until next time.